Hello friends, in this lecture we will see the most important round robin scheduling algorithm from CPU scheduling. And in this class we will see the definition, advantages and disadvantages and solved problems of round robin scheduling algorithm which is otherwise called as RR scheduling. The round robin scheduling algorithm is designed especially for time sharing systems. This is very similar to first come first serve scheduling algorithm but the preemption is introduced in this round robin algorithm to enable switch between the processes. Okay, here a small time unit which is otherwise called as time quantum or time slice is defined and the time slice is vary from 10 to 100 milliseconds. Here the ready queue is treated as a circular queue and the CPU scheduler goes around the ready queue and allocating the CPU to each process for time interval up to one time quantum that is once the process been created new process is created and the new process will be uh, uh, placed in the ready queue ready queue and the time slice is defined time quantum is defined here and for that time quantum only the processor will allow this process to execute in the CPU. Okay? Once the time slice got finished then interrupt occurred. Interrupt occurred that is the preemption. Again this particular process will go back to the ready queue itself. Okay, so this is what happening in this place. The CPU scheduler picks the first process from the ready queue and sets the timer to the interrupt after one time quantum. Okay, see one time quantum only the first process will get executed in the CPU. Then immediately this particular process will go back to the ready queue that is dispatch the process ok so this is called as round robin scheduling algorithm that means once a new process is created the new process will be placed in the ready queue ok and the scheduler will select the first coming uh, process for execution and the execution is allowed only the given time quantum once the time quantum finished then interrupt occurred because this is the preemption scheduling algorithm isn't it so interrupt occurred then the current process is again go back to ready queue okay that will placed at the last of last of ready queue next the second process will be selected for execution so this is called as round robin scheduling algorithm so in the round robin scheduling algorithm one of these two things will happen the first condition is the process cpu burst time is less than the time quantum okay then the process itself will release from the cpu voluntarily because before this time quantum itself this process will be completed its execution then it re itself release from the cpu next the scheduler that is round robin scheduler will select the next process from the ready queue to execute okay so this is the first condition see when come to second condition if the cpu burst time of the process greater than one time quantum okay that uh, the burst time is greater than one time quantum then the timer will go off and will cause the interrupt okay because the process will allow only the given time quantum of time after that the interrupt will occur then the context switch will be executed that means the what is the purpose of context switch that will save the status of the currently executing process 
okay next the process will put at the tail of radicule just now we have seen isn't it so the process which is available in the radicule will be selected here that is this particular process will be selected for execution now and if the bus time is greater than time quantum then only the time quantum period alone the process is allowed to execute in the CPU immediately interrupt interrupt occurred then the remaining context switch is there the context switch is used to save the current status status of process will be saved and the process will go back to the tail of the ready queue okay that will be saved here tail of the ready queue okay and the cpu scheduler will select the next process from the ready queue for execution now this particular process isn't it so this particular process will be selected for execution next so this things will be continued until all the processes will get executed so this is called as round robin scheduling algorithm the advantage and disadvantages of round robin algorithm first let us see these advantages this round robin algorithm is very effective in general purpose time sharing systems or transaction processing system here the fair treatment of all processes because all the process will be treated equally and overhead on process is low because every process are treated equally that is equal priority is given for all the processes hence the response time is very good for start short processes okay so these are the advantages next let us see the drawbacks of round robin scheduling algorithm here care must be taken in choosing the quantum value because this is very important so based on the quantum value only the performance of round robin scheduling will be cal calculated here the processing overhead is there for handling this clock interrupt because every interrupt the context switch will be working isn't it to save the status of current process this is the additional overhead of this round robin scheduling algorithm hence and the throughput is low throughput is very low if the time quantum is too small this is another drawback of round robin scheduling and next let us see one problem so that you can easily understand this round robin scheduling algorithm okay for here consider the following set of processes arrival at time zero so for all the processes arrival time is is zero for all the process arrival time is zero and time quantum is four milliseconds so the cpu will allow to execute this process maximum of four milliseconds okay with the length of cpu burst is given in the milliseconds okay for first process the cpu burst time is 24 and second is 3 and third process is 3 okay so with this given problem we try to solve this particular problem by using round robin scheduling algorithm and now let us try to solve this problem by drawing this gun chart okay so here the p1 will start its execution first so the starting time of p1 is 0 and the p1 will execute only 4 time quantum because the given time quantum is 4 milliseconds isn't it so up to 4 milliseconds only the p1 will be allowed for execution ok so 0 plus 4 which is equal to 4 ok after that the p2 will start its execution because we are going to follow first come first serve basis but the process will be allowed only up the given time quantum for execution isn't it so next p3 will start its execution sorry p2 will start its execution the bus time is 3 the bus time is 3 here the bus time is less than the quantum time ok the bus time is less than the quantum time hence p2 will complete its execution 
within the given time quantum okay so 4 plus 3 which is equal to 7 right so the starting time of p2 is 4 and finishing time is 7 right after that p3 will start its execution here also the burst time is less than quantum time hence p3 will also complete its execution without any interruption so 7 plus 3 which is equal to 10 okay starting time is 7 and finish time is 10 for process 3 right so after that p1 will start its remaining execution so first 4 p1 got finished so 24 minus 4 balance 20 burst time is remaining for p1 so all these 20 the p1 will utilize the cpu and it will complete its execution then the finish time of p1 is 30 okay finish time is 30 now we need to compute the waiting time of p1 okay when the p1 starts its execution at 0 and next starting time is so it will utilize up to 4 isn't it so p1 will utilize up to 4 right so after that it will start only at 10 okay so 10 minus 4 which is equal to 6 hence the waiting time of p1 is 6 is that clear to you okay the p1 will start here first four time slides p1 completes then it will wait in the ready queue okay how much time it will wait in the ready queue it will start next starting is only 10 only 10 hence 4 minus 10 which is equal to 6 so 6 milliseconds it will wait in the ready queue okay and the waiting time of process 4 process 2 is 4 and the waiting time of process 3 is 7 so here no problem for us okay now we have to compute the average waiting time of all the processes the average waiting time of all the processes is 5.67 okay that is 6 plus 4 plus 7 divided by 3 which is equal to 5.67 next we need to compute the turnaround time okay the finishing time of second process is 7 and finishing time of third process is 10 and finishing time of first process is 30 okay because the arrival time is 0 then finish time will equal to the turnaround time okay that is 15.67 right that is 30 plus 7 plus 10 divided by 3 which is equal to 15.67 okay this is how the round robin scheduling algorithm is working and now let us try to solve some more complicated problem that is example 2 with the time quantum 20 milliseconds here we are having four different processes and the corresponding burst time is given for all the processes and assume the arrival time is 0 for all the processes so with this given data we have to compute the average waiting time of all the processes okay first to get the value we will start with gun chart okay first the first process will uh, selected for execution because we have to follow first come first serve for selection okay so p1 will start its execution what is the time quantum 20 milliseconds so p1 will allow only 20 milliseconds for execution okay so p1 the bus time is 53 and that executed first 20 hence the remaining time is 33 the remaining bus time for p1 is 33 okay so first 20 it finished starting is 0 waiting we don't know so still uh, p1 uh, process is pending isn't it so we need to compute this waiting future and next uh, after this 20 milliseconds the p2 will be selected for execution the bus time of p2 is 17 that is less than 20 milliseconds so without any interruption p2 got completed here itself so 20 plus 17 which is equal to 37 
So, finish time of P2 is 37, starting time is 20. Okay, this is completed. And when come to P3, the bus time is 68. Okay, P3, next is selected for execution. Uh, timing is 68 minus 20 because only 20 the P3 is allowed. 20 equal to 57. So, the starting time of P3 is 37. See this particular 37 and finishing time. Yeah, it is not yet finished. So, we have to wait. So, the balance is 48 milliseconds are pending. So, after this P4 will start its execution. The bus time is 24. So, P4, 24 minus 20. So, balance 4 is there. Okay. So, first 20, P4 will allow for execution. So, at 77, P4 will stop its execution. Then, it will go back there. Okay. Now, the starting time of P4 is 57. Okay. It will execute up to 77. Okay, now if the 77 P1 will start its balance execution, equal, isn't it? So now P1 pending burst time is 33 minus 20. So balance 13 is there. So up to 20 P1 will start its execution up to 97. Okay, at 97 P3 will start its execution up to 20. So minus 20, which is equal to 28 is pending here for P1, P3 sorry. Okay, so P3 will execute up to 20 that is 117. And next P4 will start its execution. For P4, 4 bus time is there, isn't it? So 117 plus 4 which is equal to 121. So till 121, P4 will complete its execution. So the finish time of P4 is 121 okay see after that the p1 will start its execution the balance time is 13 isn't it so 121 plus 13 which is equal to 134 hence the finish time of p1 is 134 after that p2 p3 is here p3 28 he is here okay so 28 first 20, 20 it will complete and the balance 8 is here balance 8 also it will complete okay here 20 here 8 right so p3 will finish at 162 see p3 will finish at 162 isn't it p3 will finish here right hence the arrival time is 0 then the turn around time is also equal to the finish time. Now we need to compute the waiting time of all the processes. Okay. So P1 here P1 the P1 will uh, execute see P1 will start 0 to 20 first 20 it will execute after that it will wait up to here isn't it so p2 to p4 this much time this will wait okay so 77 plus 77 minus 20 77 minus 20 so up to 77 only it will start its next execution so this minus 20 because this 20 the p2 is already executing plus the p1 will starts only here 121 isn't it next starting is here minus 97 so this much time the p1 will waiting here in the ready queue okay 121 minus 97 so 81 the waiting time of p1 is 81 like p2 it will start at 20 isn't it so p2 no problem 20 for p3 see p3 will starts here 0 minus 37 plus 97 minus 57, 97 only it will starts next. So, here this time is uh, waiting time 
and 134 minus 77. 134 here minus 77, 77 is here. Okay. So, this is the waiting time of P3 and next likewise P4 will also be calculated. Now, what is the waiting time of P1? This is 81 and this is 20 here 94 here 97 okay this is what the waiting time of all the process we need to fill here after that the average waiting time is 73 okay up to this we have seen the round robin scheduling algorithm in this class we have seen the definition advantages and disadvantage of rr algorithm after that we have seen uh, two problems also okay now this is the question time students please write the drawbacks of round robin algorithm in the comment box next class we will see another important scheduling algorithm uh, from second unit thank you